Good afternoon. The Secretary General will preview the summit this week and then, of course, he'll be very happy to take your questions. Good afternoon. Uh, tomorrow and uh, Thursday, NATO leaders will meet here at our new headquarters. NATO embodies uh, the bond between Europe and North America, which has kept our people safe and uh, secure for almost uh, 70 years. We are an alliance that exists to prevent uh, conflict and preserve uh, peace. We are an alliance that constantly adapts to a changing world. Above all, we are an alliance that delivers. At the summit, uh, I expect we will deliver once again. In strengthening our deterrence and defense, stepping up the fight against uh, terrorism, and achieving fairer burden sharing. Investing in defense is a matter of credibility and fairness. That is why we will discuss defense spending and burden sharing tomorrow. In 2014, allies agreed to stop the cuts, start to increase, and move towards spending 2% of GDP on defense within a decade. Since then, we have made major progress. But we still have a long way to go, so we must redouble our efforts. Today, I can announce that we are releasing new 2018 defense spending estimates for each ally. And they are encouraging. They show that compared to 2014, all allies have stopped the cuts. All allies are increasing spending. Last year saw the biggest increase in a generation. And this year will be the fourth consecutive year of real increase in defense spending. The estimates uh, also show that we expect eight allies to spend uh, at least 2% of GDP on defense this year, compared to just three allies in 2014. Allies are also investing billions in new major equipment and stepping up their contributions to missions and operations. So we have reversed the trend before the trend was down, now it is up. For decades, our nations were cutting, cutting defense spending by billions of dollars. Now they're adding billions of dollars. I would like to thank uh, all our nations for the efforts they are making to keep our defenses strong in a more unpredictable world. And I would like to thank President Trump for his leadership on defense spending. It is clearly having an impact. Last year on the President's initiative, we ag agreed to develop national plans to raise defense spending. Based on these plans, we estimate that European allies and Canada will add an extra 266 billion US dollars to defense between now and 2024. This is significant. Tomorrow, we will also take uh, decisions to step up NATO's role in the fight against terrorism. We will launch a new training mission in Iraq with hundreds of NATO trainers. We will also help to set up military schools to increase the professionalism of Iraqi forces. This will be a non-combat mission, but it will help Iraq prevent the re-emergence of ISIS and other terrorist groups. We will also agree additional support for key partners in the Middle East uh, and North Africa. We will increase our support for Tunisia with expert advice in areas including counterterrorism and counter-improvised explosive devices. And we will step up our support for Jordan, including on cyber defense, counter IDs and crisis management. Prevention is better than intervention. And helping our partners prevent and manage crisis makes us all safer. 
To further strengthen our deterrence and defence, we will adopt a readiness initiative, the 430s. This is a commitment to have, by 2020, 30 mechanised battalions, 30 air squadrons and 30 combat vessels ready to use within 30 days or less. We will agree a new command structure, including a new command for the Atlantic in Norfolk, Virginia, and another uh, military uh, command for military mobility in Europe, uh, in Ulm, Germany. Military mobility in involves moving troops and equipment quickly, wherever they are needed. And over the last uh, four years, NATO has invested over 2 billion euros in infrastructure, making this possible, including sea terminals, fuel containers, and runways. And tomorrow, through our close cooperation with the Eurocontrol, we, also, we will also increase air mobility. Aircraft supporting NATO missions will be given a NATO call sign and receive priority handling, uh, handling uh, by air traffic control in Europe, in peacetime and in crisis. Tomorrow, we will also discuss NATO's response to hybrid threats and agree to set up new counter-hybrid support teams to support allies at risk. Our strengthened defense, uh, will, uh, defenses will extend into the cyber domain, with a new cyber operations center as part of the new NATO command structure, and the ability to draw on allies' national cyber capabilities in NATO missions and operations. Over dinner, we'll meet with our colleagues from Finland and Sweden, as well as the presidents of the European Union and the European Commission. Together, we will discuss the main security challenges confronting the transatlantic area, including challenges from the Middle East and North Africa, a more assertive Russia, and the situation on the Korean Peninsula. This morning, I met with uh, President Tusk and President Juncker. We have just signed a new declaration uh, uh, setting out a shared vision for how NATO-EU cooperation can make us all stronger and safer and contribute to fair burden sharing. On Thursday, we will meet with the presidents of Georgia and Ukraine, two of our closest partners. Together, we will address regional challenges. We will also discuss the defense reforms and NATO's continuing support. We will close uh, the summit with a meeting on Afghanistan, joined by our resident support partners. Our presence in Afghanistan is vital to ensuring the country never again becomes a safe haven for international terrorists. And allies are increasing their commitment, both in forces and in funding. We have added around 3,000 more trainers to our non-combat mission. At the summit, I expect we will also agree to extend funding for the Afghan forces beyond 2020 and will express our full support for President Ghani's bold peace initiative and his government's reforms. Finally, I expect that following last month's historic agreement on the name issue, we will agree to invite Skopje to start accession talks. Once the agreement is finalized and implemented, we will be able to invite the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia to become NATO's 30th member under its new name, the Republic of North Macedonia. A strong signal that NATO's door is and remains open. Our summit comes at a time when some are questioning the strength of the transatlantic bond. And I would not be surprised if we have robust discussions at the summit, including on defense spending. Different views are normal among friends and allies. But I'm confident that we will agree on the fundamentals. 
North America and Europe stand together. We will take decisions to strengthen our alliance and protect our citizens for years to come. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions.